Well, I'm here with VP Ber Ferguson. She is the creator of NoFactZone.net. What is NoFactZone.net, VP? NoFactZone.net is the number one Stephen Colbert fan site on the internet. Uh, it's it's the only it's the biggest that is organic that is by the fans for the fans. We receive uh, on average over sixty thousand unique visitors and over a hundred thousand unique uh, page site uh, views every month. So oh. we're pretty big and we have a very amazing community of people who chat and participate in the comments, participate in creating content. It's it's a very amazing site. Oh well, thank you. And I know you just gave a presentation on how to go about building your community. How can small businesses and entrepreneurs uh, go about trying to create their own communities as well? It's for, I think it's the most important thing is to build those relationships and build those fans who are passionate about your product. Uh, for example, Rubra, which is one thing that I use for my site, uh, is a business and I pay them and I get my service every month and I am a raging fan of what they have. So if you have a good product and you're confident in that, your, your goal is to get those fans. And the way to do it is to show this to as many people as you can and build those relationships. There's a big difference between saying, hey, buy my product, and saying, hey, how are you doing? I just want to know a little bit about you. Um, let me see if this might fit your lifestyle. Let's you know, talk about things like that. And it's, it's a it's a one-by-one one person because once you start getting those fans, they'll start talking about your product, and then you'll eventually have a whole huge amount of people that will talk about your product. One of the best communities I know of, that, of, of a product that I buy is the Lush community, Lush.com, their skincare community, and they have message boards with both staff that participate and raving fans that love to talk about their product. And I've never seen a, a business that has incorporated community so well into their culture and into selling their product as Lush. So if you want a good example, go to that site, read their, read their comments, read their boards. It's a great way to, to build a, a community for business. Oh, well, great. Thank you. What about just a few tips that you can give to someone who's just getting started and learning about community building? Um, the first thing you need to do is make sure your site is as friendly and easy to use as possible and as easy for people to participate in as possible. You want to make, to make it very clear how do you contact, how do you, how do you leave a comment, how do you, you know, participate in whatever community is going on. For example, on my site, nofactzone.net, I have a big button on the side of my blog that says, do you have a tip, a piece of news? Contact us. It's so much bigger than the little teeny contact button in the nav bar. And in addition, on almost every post, I say, I'd love to hear from you. Well, say something in the comments. And then there's this big thing at the bottom that says comments. Leave your comment here. And you know, participate in it. Thank you so much for visiting and blah, blah, blah. And you go in there and you can see that that works. We've got tons of comments, but you've got to, it's not enough to say, here's the opportunity to do this, a call to action and a call to get to know somebody, get to, to hear what they have to say, to talk back with them, and to give them an opportunity to give their voice is, is very, very important. Oh, well, thank you. And I know you mentioned in your presentation about uh, setting up the guidelines as to how you want your community run. Yes. Can you explain a little bit about that, please? Yes, um, we have a set of community rules. Uh, if you go to nofactzone.net about this site, comment policy is like the Ten Commandments of commenting. But it's things like, you know, stay on topic, don't troll, don't use cuss words. You know, Stephen Colbert's mother has a, has a computer and she knows how to Google. We want to make sure that anybody who finds this site, from a 14-year-old girl to a relative of Stephen to anybody, you know, any spectrum is going to feel comfortable in our community. So that means that we have a very tight-knit community and we're very careful about what we make sure not is only published, but is in the comments. It's very important to me that everybody feel comfortable there. And so having that, that guideline and giving guidance when somebody breaks it, if somebody says a comment and I don't feel comfortable with it, I'll take the comment off, but I get an email every time somebody leaves a comment and on my post and I'll send them an email and I'll say, thank you so much for participating. However, you really, please don't use that language. It, it's, it's not appropriate for our community, but please come back. I really do want to hear what you have to say. So taking it and making it a positive experience for them, even though you're kind of gently correcting them helps so much in keeping the community under control and keeping the standards that you want to keep. And I imagine that would be very difficult in, in, in a situation where uh, it's a business, like you were saying. Mm -hmm. You've got to be very careful about those relationships. But it is important because there are businesses where you open their website and their community is just thrash. There's, it's Wild West, completely inappropriate. And there have been companies where I've said, I want to see what community they have, and I've seen how they run it, and I'm like, I'm not buying that. Mm -hmm. I'm not having anything to do with that. 
And again, uh, as opposed to Lush, which not only do I read, but I participate in because I believe in their product and I like the way that they blend their community. Oh, DB, your input has been so grateful and thank you so much for sharing your thoughts. You are the guru in community building. Thank you for sharing. Thank you.